I'm modifying and weathering bridge abutments for a custom installation on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. In a recent video, I showed you how I built and weathered a micro-engineering deck girder bridge. And in that video, I showed you how I installed custom guardrails, painted and weathered the bridge and the track to make that kit look fantastic. Well, the one piece of that puzzle that was not yet complete was the abutments. And so today, we're going to work on that project. Now, in my case, I had two options. I could either build a custom scratch-built set of abutments for this bridge, or I could use something that was commercially available. The problem was the commercially available abutments that I found didn't exactly fit the bridge. They were made more for truss bridges, not for this deck girder bridge. Well, in my case, I chose to take a commercially available set of abutments and modify them in order to fit the particular bridge and application that I needed. And then I painted and weathered them to make them fit the area of the nation that uh, I am modeling. So today, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that, how I modified the abutments, painted and weathered them, and you'll see exactly how they came out and how the bridge and abutments together look. So let's head on over to the workbench right now, and we'll get started. In a previous video, I built MicroEngineering's in-scale 80-foot deck girder bridge. I will include a link to how I built and weathered that bridge in an end screen in the end of this video. You'll want to be sure and check that out. I needed abutments to fit this bridge. I really like the look of these commercial abutments from Chooch Enterprises, but the height of the standoff between the bridge support and the track support shells was too short, so I would have to modify it in some way if I were going to use them. Also, the single bridge abutments are a good width for a truss bridge, but were much too wide for the deck girder bridge. I decided to use a single abutment from a set of double track abutments and cut them to make two abutments from one of the double track abutments. This way, I could make the abutment the correct width for this bridge with less waste, as the double track abutment is less than twice as wide as the single track abutment. The overall height of the abutment is perfect for the scene that I am working with, so I'll need to remove some of the stonework from the bottom of the abutment and add it to the top of the track support shelf in order to make it fit the bridge and also fit the space that I need in the scene that I am working on. I use a set of precision calipers to measure the distance between the top of the existing track support to the bottom of the ties on the track. I then use the caliper set at that distance to mark the bottom of the abutment on the back exactly where I would need to cut it. I used the bridge to mark where I would need to cut the abutment vertically to get the correct width. Since this scene will not be visible from the back, I can use the two detailed ends facing forward towards the front of the layout, and the cut edges will face the back and will not be visible. Having marked all of my cuts, I began trying to cut the piece with a razor saw, but it was clear that this hard resin was going to take forever to cut this way. So when I had them marked well with a razor saw, I took the piece out to my garage and cut it with a bandsaw. The bandsaw cut through the material in seconds. With the basic cuts made, I marked the piece that I had cut from the bottom of the abutment in order to fit the top to accommodate the height of the deck girders. I then cut these to shape on the bandsaw as well. With all the pieces cut to fit, it was time to adhere the pieces that I had cut from the bottom to the top of the abutments. I've tried using CA to glue this type of resin before, but it does not work well. 
The porous resin drinks in too much of the CA and it often simply will not adhere. I chose to use some 5 minute epoxy instead. To facilitate good mixing, I had to mix much more of the epoxy than I actually needed for the project. I mixed the two parts thoroughly together in a cup with a scrap of old dowel rod. I then applied a small amount of the epoxy to the top of the abutment with a toothpick. I was careful not to get the epoxy too close to the detailed front or ends of the piece so it wouldn't squeeze out and mar the finished surface. I then positioned the piece where I needed it, squeezed it firmly into place, and clamped it to hold it tight until the epoxy cured. When the epoxy was hard, I test fit the bridge on the abutments to make sure that everything was going to line up and fit well. It all looked really good. The Chooch abutments come in a light gray color, but they need much more color and definition in order to look right. I used the scrap that I had cut from the middle of this abutment to test some coloring and weathering ideas. Ultimately, I used Monroe Models weathering washes, the rusty brown and dark earth colors, to add some reddish brown color that would be natural for the area that I model. I dabbed off the excess with a paper towel and then blended the color slightly with a dry brush allowing some of the original gray to remain showing. I then gave it definition by applying some India ink wash. The ink darkens the whole piece a little bit, but it tones down significantly as it dries, and it gives nice shadow definition to the crevices. When I found a look that I was pleased with, I used that technique on the actual abutments that I had cut. I painted the cut ends of the abutment with apple barrel granite gray craft paint. The ends should not really show, but the tops will, and a bit of paint will keep the stark white from shining through. I then applied the weathering washes as I had to the scrap piece. I blended the colors together until I was happy with the general look. Make sure to apply the washes to the tops and ends of the abutment as well. When the washes were applied and dry, I added the India ink wash. You'll need to watch where the ink settles. Some ink will tend to pool between the shelf and the upright wall. Simply wick away the excess with a paper towel. Allow the ink to dry thoroughly before proceeding. When the India ink was dry, I dry brushed the surface with Model Master's Light Ghost Gray to even out the color a bit and to bring out the highlights. I thought the gray would be a good choice for this step because it matched the original color pretty closely. In fact, the gray did not provide the contrast that I was looking for in this step. And when I was finished, I realized that I didn't have enough India ink in the crevices either, so I repeated both of these steps. I reapplied the India ink to get more contrast in the shadow areas. And again, when it was dry, I dry brushed the surface, this time with Vallejo Flat White. Being careful to use only a trace of paint on my brush, I hit the highlights of the stone surface to simulate sun glinting off of the edges of the stone and to tone them down a bit. When done with this step, I placed the bridge back on the abutments and marked the placement of the bridge shoes for a final weathering step. Rust often streaks down from the bridge shoes down the surface of the abutments as water washes it down the stone. To simulate this, I used Monroe Models weathering powders. 
I started with medium earth, which created a nice old rust look, but I wanted a little more contrast, so I added a bit of dark rust. I streaked the rust straight down exactly below the marks where the bridge shoes will sit. On the ends of the abutment, I streaked some dark earth powder down below where the shelf meets the vertical wall to simulate the dirt and grime that would wash down with the rain. And with that, my abutments are complete. Here's the entire bridge staged on my layout so you can get an idea of how it's going to look when it's installed. Well, it took a little bit of planning and a little bit of work to modify these abutments to make them fit the bridge that I'm using the way that I wanted them to, but I'm pretty pleased with the way they came out. I think they came out as well as I could have expected without completely scratch building a set of abutments specifically for this bridge and this application. I'm also pretty pleased with the way the weathering came out. I may do a little more adjusting just to tone down some of that rust streaking, but I think overall it looks pretty good and I think the combination of the abutments and the bridge are going to make a great focal point near the front edge of the switching layout that I'm working on right now. Well, if you enjoyed this video, you found it helpful, and here's a link to some more videos that I know you're going to enjoy as well. I hope you'll check them out. Also, take a moment to look at the description down below, because there you're going to find my promo code for Micromark that can save you 10% on regularly priced items at micromark.com. You're also going to find a link to my Amazon page and my Amazon pick of the week, as well as my Patreon page, ways that you can connect with me on social media, and tons of other great links. Be sure and check out the description. Well, I hope you'll join me each Tuesday as I bring you more great model railroad videos, and I look forward to seeing you then. Tim, Lizzie?